here is another sample argument for us to do some work on. So the basic argument here is lead causes brain damage. Many WHO, that's World Health Organization studies, conclude this. So we should ban lead production. Also, we should never purchase leaded products. Now, if we start for looking for the conclusion here, what would you say is likely to be the conclusion? Maybe that lead causes brain damage? Well, if you think that might be the conclusion, start asking yourself, is everything above that line designed ultimately to support the claim that lead causes brain damage? We have these studies about brain damage here. Looks like those might be decent evidence for the fact that lead causes brain damage. What about the idea that we should not buy leaded products? Is that evidence that lead causes brain damage? Or is it the other way around? Is it the brain damage itself that gives us evidence that we shouldn't buy leaded products? Or the idea that we should ban lead production? It looks like the fact that we should ban it isn't evidence for the fact that it's harmful. Rather, the fact that it's harmful is evidence that we should ban it. So let's take this out of the conclusion space here. It looks like it doesn't belong there. But notice we had two things that seem to be concluded from this fact about lead and the problems with lead. One was we should ban lead production, and the other was we should not buy leaded products. So how do these fit together? Is it like this? The fact that we shouldn't buy them shows that we should ban the making of lead? Well, doesn't really seem like it works that way. Um, because we're asking for sort of two different independent judgments from the person who's aware that lead causes brain damage. One being, don't buy the products, and two being, we need these policies against even producing the products. So it looks like banning lead production and also not buying the products are both things that this author thinks we should do because of the fact that lead causes brain damage. And these brackets indicate that I think the premises above, in this case this premise, is feeding directly into these two conclusions. Now, what about this, the WHO studies? Should this be two premises side by side? Should they perhaps be conjoint premises? Let's take a look. Lead causes brain damage. WHO studies have been done and concluded that lead causes brain damage. Should I say these are sort of conjoint premises taken together? They imply the conclusion. Well, if lead causes brain damage, that's probably sufficient to get these conclusions, so that doesn't look like it's that promising. In fact, it looks like one of them is actually evidence for the other. So it probably makes more sense to say, what is the evidence that we need to ban lead production and stop as individuals consuming leaded products? Well, it's the brain damage. And then what then is the evidence for the brain damage? Well, the evidence for the brain damage is these WHO studies that have concluded that lead in those cases caused brain damage. That gives us evidence for the general conclusion that lead in general causes brain damage, which gives us some reason for thinking we should ban the production of lead and also stop buying lead. So here we have a case of a small vertical pattern, and then we have two conclusions that are supported primarily by just this one premise. Let's take on one more argument here. Here's an argument, you should not eat foie gras. Foie gras is inhumane. You should not eat inhumane food, and the force feeding is what makes foie gras inhumane. If you're not familiar with foie gras, it's a controversial method of um, creating specialty products from duck by force feeding ducks um, with a funnel or other mechanism to make them eat more than they would otherwise eat. 
what do you think is the conclusion here? If I start with that, um, is it that faux gras is inhumane? It definitely looks like the person making this argument wants to convince me that faux gras is inhumane. But that doesn't really look like it's where they want me to stop. It looks like ultimately they want to convince me faux gras is inhumane because they want me to stop eating it. So as things look so far, we can always move it around. But let's start with the assumption that this is a good candidate for my conclusion. Okay, then how would you organize the uh, premises above that then? Force feeding makes faux gras inhumane. Faux gras is inhumane. This looks like a pretty clear case here of a premise and a conclusion, doesn't it? So force feeding is my evidence that I'm being given here for the claim that faux gras is inhumane. So it looks like there is a vertical structure here. These facts about force feeding of ducks is my evidence for the claim that faux gras is inhumane. Um, now, what about this? You should not eat inhumane food. Maybe it looks like this. Is the fact that I should not eat inhumane food, is this given as evidence for the claim that faux gras is inhumane? It doesn't seem like it. Um, if anything, it would go the opposite way, right? Um, if faux gras is inhumane, then I should not eat it. Um, but that's my relationship between these two here, right? So what if we move it down one level and consider it as a premise feeding into the idea that I shouldn't eat foie gras? So now we have two independent premises feeding into the fact that I should not eat foie gras. And one of those two premises has evidence for it as well. How well does this work? So I would be saying here, the fact that you should not eat inhumane food is evidence for the fact that you should not eat foie gras. Foie gras is inhumane, and that's evidence you should not eat it. What do you think about having these as separate premises that independently justify the claim? I think that doesn't really work, and here's the reason why. These probably have to be taken together as a unit to give evidence for the conclusion. Because the mere fact that I shouldn't eat humane food doesn't say anything about foie gras without the addition of the claim that foie gras is inhumane, right? If I just convinced someone I shouldn't, that they shouldn't eat inhumane food, and I said don't eat foie gras, that's not a convincing argument, it's not on its own giving me evidence for the claim, unless you've also shown me independently that foie gras is inhumane, and then taken together, these have the power to support the conclusion that I shouldn't be eating foie gras. So I hope that taken together, these examples help to give you uh, some tips as to how you can go about diagramming arguments. These are still relatively simple arguments. These basic building blocks can be combined in literally an infinite number of ways, given an infinite number of premises. But the key element is always going to be this. For everything where you want to put something below something else, say, is that element that's put on top really intended to give support, evidence, for the conclusion that follows? If so, you're on the right track. If not, rearrange the elements and start thinking about what is the inferential structure within your argument and try to get more precise with those relationships.